Hi, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So in this lesson, we're going to work on the problem we had left over from the last lesson, which is that um, the collider that detects the actual hit, the punch from the player, can actually activate when we're not punching as long as that collider comes in contact with the enemy at a certain point so we're going to fix that by switching the collider to active and not active and let's begin we'll come to the opponent head hit first so Let's come at the top here. I'm going to create of type private, of type collider. Let's give this a naming convention. I'll just use head hit collider for now. So let's get that into the comments, create naming convention for the collider <coughs> and let's come to the void start we'll use that head hit collider naming convention we're going to say equal to get component open and close brackets inside the brackets collider come to the end of the line we'll open and close brackets we'll open and close again so let's just put this in head hit collider equals the get attached collider yeah that will that'll do let's just come down to the next line head hit collider dot enabled equals false into the comments set collider to disabled on start up and with that done let's come back to the top here we're going to create a type private bool return if player is punching and as you probably now notice should I say I'm going through this rather quickly there is quite a bit of code but it's all fairly simple and it's all the type of things we've done numerous times before on this series but as ever if I have skipped over something and you want more clarification please just leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. So let's put in this create spool to hold return player is punching value. let's just save that there for the moment and we want to come to the play one movement script so let's have a look here and just bear with me i'm just getting the moving the control pad out of the way put it in Somewhere where it was easy to reach, so I didn't have to keep bending for it like I normally do, but I'm it's getting in the way, <laughs> so I'm going to have to move it again. Um, but enough of that, let's just uh, get on with the programming. So here, you can create this wherever you like. We want to be of type public static bool underscore player is punching into the comments defined if the player is let's say active actively 
punching or not. And let's come down to the void start. We could put this anywhere. I think I'll just put it here for now. Player is punching. That's going to be equal to false. Into the comments, set player is punching to false on startup. And let's come back to the head hit script now. So now we have that variable created, we can come and we'll come to the void update. Return if player is punching, we're going to say it's going to be equal to the player one movement script dot the playing the player is punching variable we've just created. So into the comments we're going to say return if player is punching equals the let's say player one movement script and the player is punching variable now let's come below here we're going to create two if statements so if open and close brackets underscore return if player is punching double equals true And we'll say return if return player is punching is equal to true underscore head hit collider dot enabled will also be equal to true into the comments then set collider to enabled and let's just copy and paste that in we're going to change from true to false and the comment as well we're also going to set to false here obviously and change that to disabled let's save that off and we'll come back to the player one movement script and Okay, for some reason, okay, I've seen to access the function. I thought it would just buy me quicker to do it that way. Let's come to, in fact, let's do the attack input manager first. And let's have a look. I think that might make more sense to do this first. All oh, my comments seem to have got messed up. Let's just sort these out quickly we're going to add an open bracket here after the if import fire 3 which is our high punch and we'll add a close bracket there and of course this messed everything up now so uh, 
Let's just quickly sort this out. Um, yeah, we can come here afterwards. Let's say player is punching. Now, if it's equal to true, so we'll say and then set player is punching to true. Let's come to fire four, which is our low punch. And again, we'll just quickly tidy this all. And we can just copy and paste the same line in to set player is punching to true. And now let's come back to the wait for animations. Here we go. Bear with me one moment while I just uh, tidy up these comments. And we'll need to put a one simple line here. Plate is punching. It's going to be equal to false. Let's put that into the comments. Set player is punching to false. Let's save that off now. This must come after this block of code here. Otherwise, it will not work. So, just be aware of that. And that should be everything we need. So, and again, sorry. I'm just going to have to reach for the controller again. There we go. Plugged in. Let it play and let this run through now. So if you can remember to our from our last lesson, we could just walk up to the opponent and it would register hit before it even punched providing we walked close enough. Round one. Fight. Now I actually let's have a look. Select the opponent black opponent got a bit lucky. So now if we walk up, as you can see that doesn't happen, and that's because the collider is now disabled. But when we punch As you can see, we now have contact. Now, this will still take some tweaking. And just to let you know, as I mean, I explained in the previous video, I'm just going to alter the hit sparks effect. I'm going to alter the particle system itself. Plus, the I'm going to tweak the position on screen ever so slightly. Um, but also, um, the colliders I actually have attached to my model are fairly, fairly large. In fact, far, far too large. <laughs> and I will need to make them smaller. But this was just for making it easier. In testing but as you can see the client can still connect even if it technically doesn't but again 
I'm not going to do this on camera because there's really not much point because you're all going to be using different models. So as you can see the collider is disabled. Let's punch. You can see the collider actually enabling and disabling. Now what I will have to do is actually just come and find a value that works well for my project. So that would probably be too small but you get the idea. I'm going to tweak here. As you can see I'm probably going to have to tweak tweak the center values as well but you can do that yourself it's fairly simple and as I said you'll need to anyway because you'll all be using different models and different scales so I think we'll leave it here for now so as always I hope you enjoyed this lesson I hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now